Understanding physics, and this video is about the SI system that you need to be familiar with. So, now, why do we need a, an international system? Système international, yeah, the SI system. Uh, as far as science goes, so scientists can speak the same mathematical language. If they didn't use the same system, there would be all kinds of conversions needed. Um, in America, all, most people in America use Fahrenheit and pounds and feet and what we call the old imperial system. Uh, in nearly all of the world, we use the, the metric system uh, and in science, we use the SI system of units. Uh, never mind science, just for trade between countries, buying and selling things. You should have the same units, kilograms. Uh, so it makes things much, much simpler. If you're in the USA uh, and you study physics at a higher level, then you go to the SI system. You start using meters and kilograms. Okay, but it makes sense having the same system across the world. All scientists actually used to communicate in Latin. That was the international language of science. Uh, now it's very much become English or really American English. Uh, so the SI system, we have our base units, uh, the kilogram, the meter, the second, the Kelvin, the amp and the mole. There is another one, which is the candela, but you won't meet that in A-level physics. These are the ones that you'll come across in A-level physics, and these are the base units. Uh, and they are basically not defined, basically, not defined in terms of any other units. You can actually measure their values. A kilogram is the mass of something. Uh, length, a meter, is the mass of something. Okay, these are our base units. Then we have, oh, by the way, you don't need to know the history of these, of the definitions of them, but it is actually quite interesting if you look into it. Uh, a meter used to be, um, they used to say the circumference of the earth from pole to pole was 40,000 kilometers. So a meter was a one over 40 millionths of the earth's circumference. Uh, then it became the length of a metal bar uh, a platinum bar kept in a museum in Paris, which actually had a mass of a kilogram. Uh, then it was a certain number of wavelengths of an emission line. Uh, now it's actually defined in terms of the speed of light, because that is now uh, a universal constant, the speed of light. So it's defined in terms of the speed of light. Uh, derived units. There are 22 derived units. Um, uh, the Newton. Now, what do I mean by a derived unit? Well, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So you can express a Newton in terms of base units. These three lines here, it's not equal to, it's equivalent to, it's the same thing as. Yeah, so it's not really a mathematical expression. I'm just saying that a Newton is equivalent to a kilogram meter per second squared. Uh, how did I get that? Well, I know that F equals MA. I know the definition of a Newton. Uh, I know that a joule is a Newton meter, so it just becomes meter squared. Okay, uh, a coulomb is an amp second. You know, people, students often think that an amp is a coulomb per second. Yes, that's true, but that's not the definition of an amp. Uh, uh, the coulomb is defined in terms of the amp, not the other way around. So all of the derived units, like the Newton and the Joule and the coulomb, can be defined, can be expressed in terms of base units. Uh, interestingly, for any valid equation, for any equation which is actually true, there must be equivalent units on both sides. If you go to university and do physics or engineering you, or further maths, you'll do something called dimensional analysis, 
which is basically what I'm talking about here. If you've got an equation, you have to have the same or equivalent units on both sides, the same base units on both sides. So looking at kinetic energy is joules and joules here is so we've got kilograms there. We've got meters per second squared. So that's meters squared over second squared. And on the last slide, we said that a joule was a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Uh, again, just looking at the last one there, GPE, that's joules as well. So that's kilograms. OK, G uh, can be newtons per kilogram or it can be meters per second squared. And you'll see where I'm going with this and H is meters. So there's the meters squared there. Yeah, any valid equation there has to be the same or equivalent units on both sides. Uh, the electrical ones, I'll look at them in a bit. Uh, many constants have units. Uh, I mean, like pi doesn't have units because it's just a ratio. It's the ratio of circumference to diameter. But things like Planck's constant has got units, uh, joule seconds. Big G, Newton's gravitational constant, has got units. And you can figure out what the units are by looking at the equation and rearranging the equation. I'll show you an example later on. Prefixes, you know this already. Maybe you're just starting physics. I'm telling you, these are the ones that you need to know. Uh, kilo, mega, giga, tera, milli, micro, nano, pico, femto. Those are the ones that you need to know. Notice that uh, the big ones, apart from kilo, are capital letters. Uh, and the small ones are lowercase letters. Uh, notice that the big ones go up in powers of three times 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 6 etc and the little ones go down in powers of 3 and I've put some examples there of where you might see it so um, a, a common mistake students often make is you see a question where it says uh, the energy um, heat energy was 120 and the exam question will say something like this and for some reason, they'll think that the little m there is a typo and it's not a typo. It's basically what we're saying is, well, on your calculator, it's 120. On your calculator, you have a button which is times 10 to the. Find it. If you don't know where it is, find it times 10 to the and then plus minus you press minus. And then it's three because it's millijoules. That's 120 millijoules. Here are some questions for you to have a go at. So pause the video, pen, paper, calculator. I'll show you the answers in three, two, one. Here we go. So a hertz frequency is one over period. A hertz is a second to the minus one. Uh, a watt is a joule per second so this is my uh, kilogram uh, meter squared per second now not per second squared but per second cubed because it's divided by time yeah energy transferred over time now the ohm right let's have a bit of fun with this one i don't think you'll get this in an exam because there's there's quite a bit to it so let's have a look. So we know that let's do it in terms of units and then we'll do base units. So R equals V over I. Yeah. Uh, I is OK because that's just amps. Uh, a volt is a joule per coulomb, isn't it? So V is a joule per coulomb. So yeah, joules per coulomb. So what have we got then? We've got a joule per coulomb is a so it's kilogram uh, meter squared per second squared. That's my joule. Uh, a coulomb is an amp second. So that becomes amp and that becomes second cubed. 
and then they've got the divided by a so it's amp squared I'm running out of room there so an ohm is a kilogram meter squared per amp squared second cubed i bet you didn't know that there you go uh, the force between two charges is given by that what are the units of epsilon naught that is so the way I would do this is I would put epsilon naught on its own so I'd rearrange the equation so epsilon naught uh, I wouldn't worry about the 1 over 4 pi because that doesn't have units so epsilon naught is q1 q2 so q1 q2 is coulomb squared over Newton meter squared yeah uh, and now let's do the base unit so a coulomb is an amp second so that's amp squared second squared divided by a Newton is so that's a kilogram Uh, meter and we've got second squared on the top again kilogram meters per second squared uh, over meter squared so that's meters cubed so that is a it's an amp squared uh, seconds to the four seconds to the four kilograms per meter cubed Wow uh, put these in increasing order so uh, the way I would do it is I'd express it all in terajoules. So you've got 1.2 terajoules. Uh, this is 0 0.012 terajoules. This is 0 0.12 terajoules. And this is again 1.2. So that's the smallest, that's the next biggest. And then those two are equal to each other. 